Now, I recall uh, the words of uh, President Hirose when he confirmed about the matter of the contaminated water. And uh, his words left an impression on me, having taken place on the day following the upper house elections. Now, uh, in regard to the question raised as to why there was a delay in making public uh, the fact of the contaminated water, uh, President Hirose replied that they were not able to learn from the lessons of March 11th. Yeah. I feel very uh, insecure about the fact that uh, a company uh, that cannot learn from their past mistakes would operate a nuclear power plant. Your attention. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take questions from the floor. Just, just to be, uh, can I ask one question, just to be clear? You're not against opening up, or uh, reopening the Kashiwazaki Kariwa power plant? Mm. Mm. That is a matter, I believe, that needs to be judged after verification and a summarization of the results take place. Not against, right, in principle, you're not against reopening. Now, I believe that, as I just mentioned, that this is a matter that needs to be debated after we are able to verify and to summarize what had transpired. Here you go, Pierre. And then, um, thanks for coming today. Aaron Sheldrick, Reuters. Um, there's been various reports in the local press that the, the local authorities like Kashiwazaki Machi and Kariu Machi, uh, or, or village, sorry, um, uh, in favor of restarting the plant. Could you give some perspective on that? And related point, could you say why you're speaking to the foreign press today? Why now? Um, is this because you're not getting enough traction locally? I'd like to explain about the city of Kashiwazaki and the village of Kariwa. Now, uh, the assertion on part of Kashiwazaki City is that uh, they are going to recognize uh, the uh, examination of the aptitude of the uh, regulatory standards, but that is a separate debate from that of the restart of operations. Uh, whereas uh, the village mayor of Kariwa uh, is saying that uh, if it is possible to confirm safety, then uh, the restart should take place. So, uh, at the current stage, neither the uh, city of Kashiwazaki nor the village of uh, Kariwa have uh, said that uh, uh, the restart of operations should take place. Now, uh, in regard to why I am speaking here, I am simply responding to a request made to talk here. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, um, the governor said earlier on the uh, public support was about 50-50 around the power plant, Kashiwazaki, Kariwa. Uh, in the governor as a whole, in the prefecture rather as a whole, it's 70 percent against 30 percent for. Mm. Mm. Uh, now, uh, if I were to ask to uh, indicate the rationale for this, it would ne not be possible for myself to cite the rationale for why I believe those numbers. However, I believe that it would be all right for you to assume uh, for the general part that that would be a true picture. That's a, uh, Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, hello, my name is Daniel Leusing. I'm a freelance correspondent from Holland. I write for the financial paper at Financiële Dagblad. Uh, thank you very much for accepting the invitation to coming to the club. Um, I'd like to ask you a question about the ownership of TEPCO and the pow power plant in your prefecture. Uh, in light of the nuclear accident at the Fukushima uh, Daiichi power plant, should the government uh, nationalize TEPCO or not? And uh, would that increase or would it have any effect on the likelihood of a restart? of uh, Kashiwa Kalilazaki in uh, your prefecture. Mm. Uh, since uh, right now over 50% of the shares of uh, TEPCO are held by the government, it can be said that it has already been nationalized. Uh, However, when we consider the fact that uh, the president's mind seems to be 90% dominated by the damage liability and by fundraising, then uh, there remains concerns about whether safe operations are possible or not. So I am starting to think that uh, one option could be that liquidation procedures should, could be taken. Uh, if we consider the aspect of safe operations and he a healthy management. Is there a hand here at the front? Yeah, this gentleman. My name is Crowell with Nuclear Intelligence Weekly. Okay.
Could you describe for us your meetings with Minister Amari and what arguments he's made to uh, restart the plants and what your reaction were, were to those arguments? In regard to Minister Amari, I conveyed to him the concerns which I expressed here today. It happens to be that Minister Amari, at the time of the 2007 Chuets offshore earthquake, had uh, been the Minister of METI. So therefore, uh, when I uh, made a plea on uh, that occasion, it was uh, Minister Amari at that time that had accepted. So I believe that when I talked to Minister Amari, uh, there was uh, considerable understanding on his part about my concerns. However, uh, there was a lack of time and the secretary came and uh, told him about the cabinet meeting uh, that was pending and uh, pulled him away. So the, there was uh, inadequate interaction with him. Uh, and also, Minister Amari himself is currently not the person in charge of uh, nuclear power plant policy. And uh, he did mention about the fact that he would like to convey the concerns that I expressed. And so therefore, I would like to uh, carry out uh, adequate talks with the uh, organization that is responsible for this particular matter, NRA. But um, I suspect I'm not the only one, is exactly um, who has political responsibility for restarting a power plant like Kashiwazaki? Um, uh, where does the, the buck stop, mm. in other words? Mm. Mm. I think that the situation here in Japan is that the uh, answer to your question there is not clear. <laughs> now, uh, to talk about this a little bit more, then uh, I, it is supposed to be NRA that is responsible for securing safety. However, uh, when it comes to uh, who is responsible for, for explaining to the municipalities, then this is something that is not decided. Uh, now, uh, if we suppose that it is Minister Motegi of METI that uh, is uh, supposed to be responsible for this, then it would seem awkward that a minister that is in charge of the promotion of nuclear power will be talking about safety. I don't believe that the inhabitants are going to be satisfied with safety if they are explained by a bureaucracy that is in charge of the promotion of nuclear power. Uh, there is the uh, cabinet office that is in charge of an organization for the safety of inhabitants. Uh, the Chuo Bosai Kaigi, or uh, the, uh, the Central uh, Conference for the Protection uh, for the Prevention of Disasters. Yeah. And uh, it is, uh, Mr. F it is uh, Minister Furuya who is in charge uh, of this. I believe that uh, it is not possible for the Cabinet Office to be able to explain about this particular matter. And I believe that uh, so uh, it should uh, normally be NRA that would be held accountable for that situation. And the interpreter's correction, uh, Minister Furuya's organization is the National Public Safety Commission. Yeah. However, uh, when we look at accountability, we must look at the background for why NRA came into being. And this was because of uh, the uh, reluctance of politicians to intervene in these kind of matters. And so therefore, the situation about what politician is responsible for this particular matter is uh, left uh, ambiguous. Yeah. And uh, they are a, a commission that uh, has a very strong uh, auto uh, power of autonomy, although they are NIRA is established within the Ministry of uh, Environment. I mean, if, if I may, just follow up on that question. So let's say the NRA says that the Niigata, uh, sorry, the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant is safe. But you don't agree. Can you block its restart? Do you have that power as governor? Authority, uh, the uh, prefectural government does not have such authority. Uh, there is simply a safety agreement uh, between TEPCO. I believe that it is a uh, considerable importance that uh, uh, social credibility is something that TEPCO is able to obtain. Now, Niigata Prefecture has a technical committee that has gathered specialists in the subject of uh, the nuclear power. And uh, this uh, committee had been in place before I was appointed as the uh, prefectural governor. Mm. 
And this is because uh, it was pointed out by inhabitants that uh, there was a tendency on part of uh, the national government and on part of uh, TEPCO to hide facts and to tell lies. And this organization came about. Yes. Or there is the custom that has been established before I was uh, appointed as the uh, governor that uh, there would be solid checking carried out by the prefecture. And uh, there is a the technical uh, committee that exists uh, under that agreement that carries this out on behalf of the municipality. It's remarkable that the governor that hosts the power plant can be bypassed by bureaucrats. Mm. That is what the <laughs> Japanese system is like. Since on the working press, this gentleman here. Hi, I'm Jacob Edelman, Bloomberg News. Um, uh, as you know, the, the trade minister was at the Fukushima plant this week saying that he was going to, uh, the government was going to take a larger role in the cleanup. Uh, does this make you feel any more secure about nuclear power? Does it make you any more or less uh, uh, willing to allow uh, the uh, reactor in your pre reactors in your prefecture to restart? Mm. Uh, can you tell us if you have any specific plan at this point to meet can you tell us if you have any specific plan at this point to meet with the, uh, the TEPCO president, Hirose? The matter of the contaminated water. Is that correct? Uh, that there would be more credibility for the government and for TEPCO if the government gets involved in the matter of contaminated water and results are generated. What is important, of course, is not just the involvement of the government to take place, but the question as to whether the contaminated water could be stopped or not, and also whether the hardship on part of the residents can be reduced or not. Now, uh, in regard to a meeting with uh, President Hirose, in regard to the technology, if there is, uh, is some decision forthcoming as to the, what the final uh, decision is on which particular item, uh, technical item is, then uh, there will be a, uh, there I will try to meet with him. Uh, there still continues uh, to uh, be contact maintained uh, between the secretariats of us and of uh, President Hirose. The NRA's Tanaka has just, just commented at a press conference that he doesn't believe it's, it would be useful to meet you. And I was wondering if you could give a response to that, please. Mm. That I'd like to confirm with NRA. Uh, there was uh, the uh, law, uh, the installation act uh, that was shown in regard to NRA. Yeah. They have the obligation uh, to uh, come up with a response to uh, protect the residents. And uh, I would like to ask whether they are going, are going to use that uh, facility in order to enhance safety or not. Yeah. And uh, in regard to the essence of the uh, Fukushima accident, uh, in regard to the loss of the cooling function, uh, under the current standards, uh, would it be possible to prevent it? And also, I would like to further question about the fact that why standards were able to come about despite the fact that the verification and the summary of this had not taken place. And so therefore, uh, there had once uh, come a reply, but uh, the reasons cited were not really reasons at all and were not explanations. And so rather than uh, saying that uh, uh, it is useless to meet with me, rather it should uh, be assumed that uh, they are reluctant to meet because they are not in a position to explain. To describe the situation between you and the regulators, Tanaka-san, and the government as being a bit of a cold war right now? Now, as already shown, uh, although requests had been made at the point that regulatory standards were being worked up to uh, secure the safety of the residents, this had been ignored. And so, therefore, uh, it cannot be said that uh, there is much of a relationship of trust between us. And I believe that the regulatory standards are not able to uh, meet with the expectations of the residents. In other words, uh, if I should okay that, then it would mean that uh, accountability w would be imposed on myself. Yeah. There are so many holes to it that I do not have the confidence to be able to explain to the residents. I, I think I saw this hand first and then Peter. Yeah. And then uh, Michael at the back. Little freelancer from Germany. I thought the, the prefecture assembly is the highest authority to uh, decide about a start, restart, or not. Not a not I think not the governor or not the 
not the bureaucrats, but can the bureaucrats bypass the local, the prefecture assembly? My second question is uh, um, a, a high number of reactors and one plate and one place uh, has a growing uh, bigger risk of a great accident. In, in Fukushima, four four reactors uh, involved in the accident. So in, in, in Kashiwazaki, there are six or seven reactors at one. So in Germany, before it was not allowed to build more than two reactors at one place. So how many reactors does uh, once uh, TEPCO start again? Do you want to ask how many will be operated if they restart? Or, yes, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> now, taking the experience in 2007 in regard to a resolution that can be passed by the uh, assembly, uh, the, uh, res uh, the range that could be covered was limited. So uh, in regard to the restart, it was not possible to put that forward for uh, assembly resolution. So therefore, the relationship between uh, Niigata Prefecture and uh, for the administration of atomic affairs uh, would uh, simply be the agreement that is in place between the prefecture and the electrical company, electricity company. Mm. So therefore, the uh, attitude must be expressed by the uh, parties to the uh, agreement. There's a question about the number of nuclear reactors. There are people who will say the contrary to the following. They, they may be saying, uh, there are people who may say that uh, the larger, the more the number of nuclear powers, uh, the more the number of uh, electricity power sources. Therefore, in regard to which is safer, I don't believe that there is a closure to this argument. Uh, At any rate, I believe that when it comes to debating about whether to restart or not, the, uh, this is something that should take place after it is possible to discuss what had happened and what countermeasures have been taken and what will happen. Uh, your first answer, um, you're basically saying, you're answering in the affirmative Siegfried's question that the prefectural authority, prefectural assembly does not have the power to stop the operating of the power plant. Mm. 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 Uh, there was interaction with the assembly in 2007, but the experience there was that uh, there was no authority to uh, carry out a resolution on this matter. Uh, Peter. <clears throat> yeah, yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Governor. I'm Peter Fuchs of Tokyo Investment Research. Um, my question really comes around to somewhat similar. Uh, Kashiwazaki Karima has uh, seven reactors, two of which, Unit 7 and Number 6, are very uh, advanced, uh, advanced wa uh, boiling water reactors. You showed that there was a problem of the venting uh, location for Reactor 2, which goes back to 1985, having a structural problem that TEPCO will not fix. Do you believe that some of the units, for example, number six and number seven, are safe enough that if a specific list of your priority concerns, not what happened at Fukushima, but what is needed to operate number six and number seven safely, would you give them a short list of criteria which, if met, would satisfy partial restart? Because TEPCO does need to have pro uh, the profits coming in from running its nuclear plants in order to meet its other obligations, don't you think? Mm. Well, here in Japan, in regard to the accident, uh, there are at most uh, four reports that have been compiled. And so therefore, it is first of all necessary to summarize uh, all of these report results. Now, when it comes to the involvement of many people and organization using advanced technologies, aside from nuclear power, there is also space development. And uh, there had been the explosion on the Challenger, and there had been uh, the uh, mid-air uh, accident uh, which took place on the Columbus in the case of the U.S. space shuttle. And the reason why, uh, despite the fact that those accidents had taken place, they were still able to push forward was because there was uh, an anal analysis of the causes and countermeasures were taken after that. And in the case of the Challenger, then uh, the, uh, there was the, the problem of the O-ring that was solved and there were improvements in the organizational structure. And then uh, in the case of uh, the Colum Columbia, was when uh, there was the uh, mid-air accident that took place, uh, it was determined that there was the insulating materials that caused a hole in the wing, and so therefore they checked the situation there and resolved it. 
So I believe that it is necessary to properly make public to the people of Japan about uh, the uh, process in which uh, this accident happened at the nuclear power plant whereby the cooling function had been lost. And, uh, and I believe that the work carried out by the uh, NRA will be greatly determined by this. I understand uh, your general concerns that questions about Fukushima Daiichi have not been fully answered. But it does, I still want to ask you your opinion if reactors, some of the reactors at Kashiwazaki Kariwa are safer than the others. The modern designs, uh, could they run safely in a way that would satisfy you because the, the accident at, at uh, Fukushima Daiichi was perhaps quite different and older designs. Is there, in your mind, a safety concern for, that is different for each reactor type? Understanding is that according to the analysis by TEPCO that there is no significant difference between the Mark I type and the Mark II type. And uh, in regard to the uh, Kashiwazaki Kariwa reactors that you asked about, they are of the Mark II type. Uh, so when it comes to not just looking at the uh, performance, but uh, in looking at the uh, organization that would be operating it or the uh, mechanisms and systems that would be operated as well as uh, the, what the response structure is and what needs to be done, I believe that in that sense there is no difference between Mark I and Mark II. Is that right? Uh, Michael, then Joel. Thank you for coming here. My name is Michael Penn of the Shingetsu News Agency. Um, in the newspapers, the Japanese newspapers, there was sort of an open debate between you and Minister Amari where he also said that you seem to have misconceptions of nuclear safety or something like this. And uh, a lot of this was read, I think, as an attempt to intimidate you into being quiet about some of your concerns about uh, nuclear safety. Do you feel that the government is trying to intimidate you into being quieter than you are? And do you think that this could affect funding for your prefecture? Do you think they're going to use other levers to try to force you to be more quiet? Any pressure when I met with Minister Amari? In regard to the comments that he had made, there was some uh, explanation made to me as to why such comments had been made. And uh, in regard to that uh, matter, uh, although uh, Mr. Amari was not the minister in charge, he had previously been uh, involved as the minister of uh, METI, and he is furthermore uh, famous in this regard, and so therefore uh, he uh, replied to questions which came up about this. And uh, he explained to me about the situation at that time, and uh, I do not believe that uh, there was anything in uh, any situation that was intimidating about it. And nor do I have any recollection of any kind of uh, fiscal pressure that was applied. Uh, <coughs> Hello, Joël Lejean from RTL Broadcasting from France. Um, simple question. Um, we, we hear that what happened in Fukushima and the, uh, the, what is rejected from there, the cesium and all those things, might eventually pollute the whole world, or at least the Pacific Ocean, the eastern coast of Japan, maybe the northern co uh, the Japan Sea coast and so on. So one concern people have all around the world is to know if yes or no, it might affect more than east coast of Japan. That's my, my first question. And second thing, and that's mostly what I want to hear, we heard that people in Fukushima have been tested for, how do you say, KAIST? KAIST and uh, those kind of health checkup. Do you, here in Niigata, have, I mean, have you prepared and planned some sort of medical checkup on the children uh, so that we don't enter into a kind of combat after an eventual catastrophe that would happen in Niigata. Do you have specific health checkup undertaken since Fukushima catastrophe? Thank you. In regard to your first question as to whether there is the possibility that this contamination may spread to throughout the world, my understanding is that already as a result of the nuclear tests that were carried out during the 1960s, that uh, this kind of spreading of contamination has already occurred to some extent. Uh, and uh, in Niigata Prefecture, uh, we have looked at uh, a portion that would normally be uh, edited by a, a Japanese person as a meal, and the radio radiation checks have continually been carried out. 
60. Now, uh, since the 1960s, the amount of radiation detected in food had been uh, going down, but uh, as a result of Chernobyl, uh, immediately uh, the levels went up. And then after that, uh, there was a tendency for those levels to go down. But then once again, these levels went up as a result of Fukushima. Uh, and I believe that uh, most likely uh, throughout the world, similar trends uh, have been observed. There's also a, ch a question in regard to the health checks. Uh, now, Niigata Prefecture is located to the west of Fukushima. Uh, and the accident had occurred in the month of um, March. It is a time whereby uh, there is a very strong likelihood by far during that period of time uh, for the uh, northwest winds to blow. And so uh, it is uh, anticipated that uh, for the most part the radiation generated from Fukushima dispersed uh, over the Pacific. And uh, the uh, level of the radioactive substances has continued to be monitored. However, there has not hardly been any high levels detected within Niigata Prefecture, and the levels are about the same as the levels detected in Kochi Prefecture. Yeah. The amount of fallout was, uh, compared to Tokyo, uh, 1 over 1,000 or 1 over 10,000 amount. So therefore, in regard to health checkups for children uh, with a prefecture-wide effort is something which I do not believe is necessary. However, on the other hand, there are quite a few people who have evacuated from Fukushima Prefecture to ours. Uh, and my understanding is that uh, these, uh, the children of these people, uh, like the children remaining in Fukushima, uh, desire to have uh, the health checkups carried out, and that in fact many of them are receiving health checkups. Yeah. I believe that the major factor for this is uh, whether there was uh, the uh, absorption of radioactive iodine at that time. There is a very short half-life that uh, such radioactive iodine has, and would be a determining factor. I am Daniel Eskenazi, freelance journalist from Switzerland. Uh, I was wondering if you have any pressure from the nuclear lobby uh, in Japan. It looks like it's still strong after, uh, even after Fukushima. And what kind of pressure are you facing also from TEPCO, uh, from the NRA, and maybe from other uh, company from overseas? And um, my second question would be, uh, would you describe yourself as the only governor that is fighting the nuclear lobby in Japan? Oh, pressure that I feel. I feel most pressure in regard to the fact that what I talk about in the press conferences, the message is not getting across. Uh, well, rather than uh, what I feel most uh, as pressure is uh, what, how it is conveyed in the press conference. And uh, I would like to try to talk about this without your associating what I'm talking about with any particular uh, company or organization. But uh, in regard to the intentions that I wish to convey, it seems that uh, it is taken up in a marginally safe manner. But uh, when uh, there are certain facts that are conveyed and uh, these are things that should be debated, it seems that uh, rather than writing about the facts, there is more focus placed by the press in regard to the emotions. And so that's a matter that I feel most pressure about in the sense that unlike other matters of uh, the uh, po politics of uh, the prefecture, in in regard to this particular matter, it seems that what should com uh, be conveyed is not being conveyed, and rather in regard to the use of words, the things that are conveyed are being conveyed uh, in an emotional context. Uh, now, one example is that uh, TEPCO in either uh, the 12th of March or on uh, the 11th of March had already anticipated a meltdown to occur. Uh, for example, there should be soul searching in regard to Fukushima and it should be made clear as to who gave the instructions uh, to tell lies for a period of two months. And uh, it is necessary to do this for them to regain credibility and yet there is no one that has been able to talk about this. In other words, it doesn't mean that a person had to go to the number two re reactor to look at the high doses, but rather normally uh, it should have been explained that there were reasons why lies had to be told and now uh, what is going to be carried out from here onwards so that lies will no longer be conveyed. Uh, 
Now, in regard to uh, securing safety of uh, nuclear power plant operations, it is not just the, simply the matter of uh, the performance that needs to be looked at, but it is necessary to look at the operational structure of the organization in place and what the response uh, would be and what the social structure would be in place. It is uh, very uh, mystifying to me as to why this kind of debate cannot be carried out. Of withholding information, there are rumors, of course, that the, uh, uh, the uh, information we now know, that the power plant was leaking a lot of radiation, uh, which was released last month, that uh, that was deliberately withheld until the LDP won the election. Would you, uh, do you have any theories on that? I have doubts as to whether this was LDP initiated or whether this was uh, politically initiated or not. And uh, especially in Niigata Prefecture, the uh, matter of the nuclear power plant uh, could have been a major political issue. Uh, there was a feeling on the ruling party that uh, it would not be a positive thing for this matter to be debated during the course of the elections. Yes. Uh, suddenly, during the course of the elections, it was declared uh, by uh, TEPCO uh, that uh, they would try to have face of examination and would be visiting me. Yes. Uh, the normal response to uh, this in uh, the ruling party and in Niigata Prefecture was that this was a tremendous inconvenience. Uh, I believe that uh, this circumstance came about not because it was politically initiated, but rather because of the fact that the board of directors structure at TEPCO had changed. Uh, and uh, there are uh, quite a number of external board directors that have entered into the picture from the business world. Uh, and uh, when the press conference in regard to the examination for safety was made by President uh, Hirose, uh, he did mention about the involvement uh, to a considerable extent of external directors. Now, of course, uh, the board directors who had uh, come up uh, from within the ranks of TEPCO were familiar with the uh, safety agreement with the municipalities and that this was complementing law. Would not be strange to suspect that, uh, on the other hand, people who had been brought up only from the business side uh, would have the attitude that that's the sort of thing that could be ignored. Yeah. And so, therefore, uh, it seems that the majority won, and the background was in regard to the risks that would have to be assumed by uh, Tokyo as opposed to the location of the nuclear power plant, Niigata Prefecture. Yeah. Now, uh, in the days when I was still at METI, uh, there was an incident whereby troubles were concealed by TEPCO. Uh, now, uh, at the time that uh, Tokyo, there was uh, uh, commercials being run whereby Denpo-chan, a character, appeared in TV commercials and called for the conservation of electricity. Uh, there was much uh, debate in regard to uh, the uh, national policies being carried out at the prefectural assembly level at Niigata. Uh, now, uh, it seems that uh, in Tokyo, although the, there is uh, the awareness of the necessity to conserve energy, uh, when we look at this compared to the regional areas uh, where uh, matters of livelihood are concerned, there is a very little um, interest in looking at uh, the impact of uh, national energy policies. Uh, I am also a f citizen of Tokyo that, after becoming governor, had uh, become aware of what kind of debate had been taking place within the prefectural assembly after the fact. Uh, I believe uh, there was the background of this difference in awareness. So that information came after the election, not before the election result. The issue in regard to the characteristics of uh, TEPCO. Right, but I would just, in your opinion, and what you think. I know, of course, I should ask them, and I will ask them, but uh, in terms of what you, mm. your impression of this coincidence, which a lot of people have remarked on. Ah, I, was, I do believe that there was something uh, intentional about this, because uh, in regard to uh, making the announcement about this after the elections, whereas uh, they must have known before the elections, there has been uh, the uh, reason explained by President uh, Hirose that uh, explanations had to be made first of all to the fishermen. So I do believe that there was uh, intent on their part. And uh, furthermore, in May, the, uh, the concentration of radioactive substances went up. So if they had done normal checkups, then they should have known much earlier. 
Yeah. And I believe that uh, in regard to why such an unnatural process had taken place and why it was that this was announced after the elections, uh, I believe that uh, in regard to that, uh, it was forced, to, uh, but it was uh, M Mr. Hiros uh, that was forced to confess that he was unable, that they were not able to learn from the lessons of March 11. Thank you very much. Any more questions in the working press? No? Okay. Any from the rest of the floor then? If there are no more questions, you can go home, right? <laughs> Last chance? Again? Siegfried? I don't want to hog the floor. <laughs> it seems uh, to me you believe in analyzing risk and then it's possible to run the power plant again. But can, is it possible to, ta to, to know about all risk? Is, is uh, nature not, even in, in, especially in, na in, in Japan, so dangerous? It is not possible to take, to know about all risk even in the nuclear industry. Mm. Mm. I believe that uh, I indicated any thinking on my part uh, nor explained about the intent to grasp all risks. Uh, for example, I would like to talk about what is the difference between a nuclear power plant and a regular electrical power plant. Uh, now, many municipalities desire the location of a regular power generation plant to be located within their jurisdiction because this would lead to the development of that particular region. Uh, that is not the case uh, in, the, in the matter of uh, nuclear power plants because uh, this divides the local public opinion. Uh, and uh, the difference is just only the fact that on one hand there is the risk of exposure to radioactivity. Yeah. Uh, accidents will occur either on a nuclear power plant or on a regular uh, power generation plant. Yeah. The point is that in the case of nuclear power plants then uh, there is a mass release of radioactive substances and uh, radio radiation and so therefore unless it is possible to determine causes and to take countermeasures it is not possible to debate this. We have time for uh, one or two more questions. My name is Suzuki, and I would like to ask about the fact that uh, there has been mention about the governor by the director of NRA, Mr. Tanaka, that uh, the governor is indeed a very eccentric person. And also there is a tendency for uh, the uh, attitudes of the governor to be uh, portrayed as a very emotional um, person. And uh, in regard to such a campaign, I have concerns about whether the governor will be able to continue as he had in the past from here onwards or not, and would like to request for his thoughts on this matter. Mm. That, that is the biggest problem. Normally, I would uh, think that uh, the best thing would be to carry out rational debate and uh, provide the lessons of Fukushima to the world as a kind of standard. And I believe that if it is not possible to do this, then somewhere in the world, once again, a similar accident would occur. Apparently, I don't know how this was calculated, but it has been estimated that uh, a meltdown would occur once every 10,000 years. And that means that if there are 100 reactors, then uh, that would mean that uh, there would be an accident that occurs once every 100 years. And in fact, uh, there are 450 units in plants throughout the world. And uh, then this would mean that uh, an accident could occur once every 25 years. If we consider uh, Three Mile Island and Chernobyl and uh, Fukushima, it seems plausible. I believe that it is not at all a positive thing for the world environment. And uh, after Chernobyl, the start talks in uh, Europe began. My understanding is that uh, this was uh, because President Gorbachev had felt that uh, if a nuclear accident at Chernobyl could cause that much cost, then if there were a nuclear war that occurred, then it, the cost would be massive. And so therefore, I believe that this was what led to detente. Yes. And I feel that since uh, we share the common asset of the global environment, in order for uh, the uh, 
damage caused by radiation to be prevented and not repeated, we should learn from the lessons of Fukushima so that this will not be repeated. And this a person close to me has said, uh, Mr. Izumida, perhaps you should take better care of yourself. The is that it would be much more easier for me if I just simply follow the flow of the times. I believe that it is a major betrayal of history if uh, you are aware of a certain thing and yet do not take any countermeasures against it. It is said that uh, after the Niigata uh, the 2007 earthquake, uh, if the uh, measures uh, taken in regard to the important seismic uh, facility in nuclear power plants were not taken as it had been taken in the Kashiwazaki Kariwa pl nuclear plant, then uh, it is most likely that there would not have been any persons being able to live in Tokyo. Uh, At that time as well, there was considerable talk about, isn't that uh, saying to me, haven't you already done enough, Mr. Izumida? And so uh, I am proud of myself that uh, I remain resolute in regard to the establishment of important uh, ismic isolated buildings. And so therefore, although there may be various things that will uh, transpire, I uh, have of a feel pride in regard to the fact that uh, I was able to make a contribution about this and although there may be various things that occur from here onwards, I would like to continue to make the efforts. Okay, well we have time for one brief question. Uh, I see Aaron's hand again. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I don't see anybody else. Does anybody else have a burning question they want to ask? No, okay. The government's constantly talked about the need to reduce fossil fuel imports um, in the absence of nuclear power. Do you think there comes a point where they just say, we've got to do it, we've got to put the reactors back on and, and ride over or roughshod over local opinion? If so, what, what then? What, where are you left then? In regard to this current question, uh, this is ma simply a matter uh, that uh, was uh, in uh, regard to the uh, BWR uh, that uh, TEPCO was operating uh, for the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant. Yeah. Not in a position to make any comments about whether it, the operators other than TEPCO are credible or not. I am aware of the fact that uh, applications have been made focusing on PWRs. And so uh, in regard to securing of uh, safety at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear power plant, uh, which is different from the PWR type, then I was simply talking about the uh, whether a co corporation that refuses to do soul searching about the past should continue operations or not. That was what I was talking about today. And I believe that in regard to the energy policies, this is something for the nation as a whole to carry out the debate upon. Uh, well, thanks to the governor for um, a very forthright, uh, honest uh, presentation. Um, if he has a, an eccentric and over-emotional slide, uh, he keeps it well covered up, I think. Uh, I didn't see it today. Um, we, uh, we hope you keep up the good fight uh, and that he will come back and report to us maybe next year on the situation in Niigata because uh, this fight is not going away, that's for sure. Uh, would you show your appreciation, please, to the governor for turning up today? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.